inflicted them a few times. Your buffalo weavers and your uh, buffalo weavers, your mast weavers, the yellow ones, and the spotted back weavers. Buffalo weavers also have a nest. I'll tell you why I thought of them just now. And this is a very, very recently made nest, probably in the last few days. You can see the perfect entrance. Now look at the detail. Uh, perfectly, that is weaved, making this a very strong structure. I mean, it can normally withstand even massive windstorms and rainstorms. Obviously, this would be hanging upside down, so this would be your entrance. So imagine we looking upside down now. The ground is up here. The bird would fly right in, and then you've got a cavern in the back here. Or alternatively, this is your entrance, so it's difficult for something else to come in here because that faces downwards. Normally, if possible, overhanging water or something. And then you've got the belly part of the nest back here, and that's where the nesting actually happens. And then just beautiful detail in this as well, all the grass blades, but there's also woven into this some acacia twigs and leaves, something you don't see all that often. And the main reason for this is when these leaves are still green, when they make them with fresh, fresh leaves, it's very visual, it's very green. The male of the weaver bird is bright yellow, so if he hangs from this nest and displays and flaps his wings and makes noise, that background shows him off nicely. So it means that females can then really see which male has made the nicest, greenest nest, which one is making the biggest efforts, and then from that they pick their mates. So one male, if he's a very good nest builder, if he's good at displaying, can have many different females. Some other males sometimes, when they're young maybe, their building is not that good yet, they don't quite get the displaying thing, or they take too long to build the nest and it dries out, and they might not get any or very few mating opportunities. The reason I thought of the buffalo weavers, if you look at the twig that this is on, this where the nest is attached, as you can see, very strong again. So normally any major winds or storms or rain or anything like that wouldn't really be a big problem for it to cope with. But in this case, quite a few of these nests, we'll show you now before we leave, are built and hanging from the buffalo weaver's nest. Now buffalo weavers use sticks like this and they just make these big sort of spiny, porcupiney looking like nests. And uh, interestingly enough, I noticed the other day that these weavers are hanging nests from the bottom of the buffalo weaver's nest as well. So, you see the story in a beautiful nest. Amazing, eh? the engineering that goes into this little bird this big. Pulls it with his beak. Just show you quickly the opening. It's a little bit, the light might be very difficult, but that bottom part of the nest up there. Just in there. And there you can see quite a few of those nests really tucked away there. Little buffalo weavers, very different looking from most or looking from most of your other weaver birds. They're black with red bills, obviously, where the name comes from. And also much more social. Most of your other weavers, the ones we're looking at, your mast weavers and spotted back, even though there might be many nests in the same area, they um, they don't really interact socially with each other that much. Awesome. Ah, let's have a look at those two as well. You've seen all the buffalo. I think 11 in total in the end. These four bulls deciding they're going to hang back a little bit more, take it easy a little longer. The ones we started off earlier, the judge and them, they've moved off now to start the afternoon's grazing. Something always very fitting about seeing buffalo at this dam for me. So enjoyed the time here. It's been quite a bit of time. You can leave these buffalo to enjoy their laziness. We're gonna go look around some more.
Okay, no road. Done this road for a while. 